Okay, we had the VIX uh, come in 18 with a decline of 12.5%. And these signals that I talk about on the VIX, again, they're just short-term price fluctuations. I'm not trying to trade the VIX. I'm just, it gives me a hint of, hey, what might happen? You start going parabolic, the, the, uh, the uh, signals don't play out as well as what we've recently had. Signals previously did play out very nicely here. Uh, the last two did not. They were predicting that we would have a down day on the S&P. We had a doji or spinning top, and then it was followed uh, by an up day. So those signals did not play out. You got another prediction here that, again, in the next two trading sessions, there's a 85% a, uh, chance, an 85% chance that we'll have a down day uh, in the next two trading sessions based on the VIX declining by over 12.5%. But as I said, 85% uh, chance it happens, 15% chance it doesn't. These were failure uh, uh, failed signals, I should say. Signals have been spot on. The breakout nailed the top. Uh, these signals did give us some volatility. Not every signal is going to play out. And again, just looking at probability. It's not trying to predict the future. You're looking at probability. Nothing, no indicators perfect. But I'm just telling you, in the next two trading sessions, uh, you got another signal here. The last two failed. Prior to that, the signals they played out really good. And over here, the signals played out really, really good. Eventually, the VIX is going to go back up and get a lower high. The S&P is probably going to make a new low. Why do I say that? Because oftentimes, the VIX will top before the S&P bottoms. And if we start seeing the RSI turn back up, then again, it might confirm a lower high on the VIX. It might be that we get a lower low on the S&P 500. This is becoming very oversold again, so we'll be watching. But in the next two trading sessions, and it may be we go higher with the CPI, but then turn or uh, turn after that. If tensions in the Middle East uh, rattle the market or not, does that get delayed more or does it happen at all? I'm told by um, uh, the media that it is going to happen and the House is expecting it this week. The intelligence is expecting it. Uh, based on what they're telling the media, they're expecting it before Thursday. That rattle markets? Yeah, it could. And again, if it does, then we'll be watching the VIX. But we're rallying up into uh, the 20 period moving averages and we're back testing the trend lines uh, there on NASDAQ. Our, uh, our uh, broken trend line that we broke, we're now back testing it and I'll be showing you those charts. Sorry for posting a little late. Again, I had something I had to tend to. Uh, apologize for that. Make sure to get this information out to you. Okay, the market continued the rally into the 20 period moving averages on NASDAQ and S&P 500. The inflation data. Told you I'm looking for a rally into these moving averages for it to stall at the 10 or 20. The gap fills, which a week and a half ago when we got that bottom that we are likely going to rally into trying to fill those gaps and the moving averages. Show you what's going on, but we have... The PPI inflation data, the PPI inflation data came in better than expected, came in cool. And so we got a big rally on the market into and overthrowing those 20 period moving averages, declining and we're getting a bearish alignment of the moving averages. Month over month came in at a tenth of a percent. Supposed to come in the estimate was two tenths of a percent and that's better than the previous. Uh, the month over month for the core uh, came in f right in flat there. Uh, it was expected to come in at two tenths of percent with the estimate came in better than expected as well and again better than the previous month's reading we have the year over year number the year over year headline number came in at 2.2 percent uh, the estimate was 2.3 so it came in better than expected and that's better than the 2.6 uh, for the headline number uh, that we had last month the core year over year came in at 2.4 percent it was expected to come in at 2.6, so also better than expected 2.4 here, better than the 2.6 with the year over year, and then on the headline number 2.2, better than 2.3. So both of them beat, okay, and both of them were better than the previous reading. The previous reading was 3%, we're down at 2.4%, and again, better than the estimate at 2.6%. So both the headline data or data with the month over month and the year over year, both of them beat expectations and again, the market rallies. Oh, inflation's coming down. So that gives the Fed the reason to cut. It's going to cut, but not for this reason. The Fed's going to cut because a recession is coming. And we're going to see it in September in all likelihood. I believe that that's when it's going to happen. It's going to be for the wrong reasons. Again, the narrative is, I have this soft landing out of the Fed. There's a, what, what recession? There's no 
there's no recession on the horizon. When the you know we just got the jobs report, which is now predicting a recession, it hasn't been wrong since 1970. The inverted yield curve, which is about to uninvert, predicting a recession. And when we rise back up, eventually uh, going to a new high on S&P, in my opinion, and uh, going back and filling the gap at uh, 20,400 on NASDAQ, uh, I think you'll see the uh, inversion inversion of the, uh, of the yield curve getting warning signs that, again, this is about to happen and the Fed is about to cut, and I've shown you those charts. Gives us a rally back up into the declining moving averages. Now, tomorrow we're supposed to get the CPI and it is uh, expected to come in on the cool side as well. I said, sometimes, you know, sometimes with these two reports, they're back to back, they're always back to back. And oftentimes one will be up, the day will be up, and the, the other, the day will be down. So it's like the CPI, even though it was a good report, the last report we got, it's a cool report, but yet the market t topped on it and NASDAQ sold off 500 points. You see what I'm saying? They attempted a rebound uh, with the PPI. So oftentimes when you get a big rally, one, you get a sell off with the other. It doesn't always play out that way, but I'm just telling you just something that I've ob observed many, many times, that's the way it works. The CPI goes first and the PPI is after. This month it's the other way around. The PPI was first and the CPI is after. It isn't always like that. Usually the CPI comes first. Be watching. Last time we got the CPI, the NASDAQ dropped 500 points. What happens this time? The CPI data is supposed to come in tame. We talked about that previously. Let's just hit the charts. Two days, we're seeing momentum signals turn back to bullish, and we saw a little bit of it down over here, but trend signals are still remaining bearish, and you have this bearish arrangement of the moving averages, and momentum in many cases is still negative. So again, uh, it's likely going to be we're going to have a test of these lows. Now, this turning back to bullish tells us we're either going sideways or we're going up and being validated. So, again, it's probably that we're going to come back and test the 200, test these lows here on NASDAQ, daily chart. Again, if we can rally with the CPI, you've got the 50 period and you've got a gap resistance right here uh, from this gap back over here directly overhead and again a possible inverse head and shoulders should we set up a higher low scenario or uh, again a slanted neckline assuming that scenario happens but this is still negative even though momentum is turning back to positive momentum turned negative over here but it wasn't confirmed we were still in positive territory now, same thing here we rallied on the S&P up to the two, 20 period moving average we came right up to it, and again, you get your 50 uh, there. We're just under it, and we saw the 20 cross below the 50, but momentum is still negative. But you are getting bullish signals here with momentum, and again, S&Ps moved up here uh, in an attempt to fill this other gap, and again, we watched. Uh, we were talking about both of these gaps and trying to rally towards filling the gaps, maybe one or both, and the moving averages. So again, well, we're getting this signal, we're rallying up into declining moving averages that are in a bearish arrangement, and momentum is not uh, validating it. Could go higher with the CPI, forming a bear flag as we're moving to that 20 period as it's crossed below the 50 period moving average on the S&P. I bring up the S&P with the awesome oscillator. Again, still got a red bar. NASDAQ actually turned blue. It was up 2.25%. S&P was up 1.68%, up 90 points. Uh, S&P, again, that gap fills at uh, 24.47, and we are just uh, uh, slightly below it. 24.34 was the close, and a little bit higher than that at the high. We have the uh, awesome oscillators, I told you, still getting green bars, but still in negative territory. So, again, there's still risk that we come back and test the 200. 200 at 5,043. Guesses we're still going to move to a lower low, and again, we're in back test mode of the trend lines uh, that we broke. But again, there's still the possibility of a higher low for a bottoming process. I am looking for a bottoming process and then eventually S&P to come back up and take out this high and fill the gap we originally got back up here. He's rallied into this level again with our Fibonacci retracements. We're at key Fibonacci uh, levels. Watching, does the awesome oscillator stay in negative territory and does it remain uh, in negative territory and start turning red. Can get a divergence or again, 
the awesome oscillator can start moving to a new low and get a divergence after uh, after it moves to new low, set one up uh, maybe surrounding Jackson Hole. Same thing. We've seen the Nasdaq drop what nearly 16%. I think it was I think it was 15.75 uh, something like that. Again, awesome oscillator still in negative territory. So we're getting the blue bar. We're getting uh, above the 20 period, but you're rallying into a declining 20 period. Moving average to 10 is still below the 20. But you're seeing a push, getting a bullish signal here for momentum as as uh, momentum signals uh, over the last few days. That's what I've gotten. But again, it's not being validated. So again, a test of the slow is still going to happen. And again, we'll see what happens. Cause that last time uh, we peaked, we got the CPI sell off. Okay, we're going to get CPI tomorrow. Even if we don't get a CPI sell off, you say we go higher, you'll have tensions in the Middle East, recession concerns, earnings, and other other uh, things. But it's probably going to be tensions in the Middle East that give us uh, rattles, rattle the stock market further. But then it's probably going to be the Fed and Jackson Hole that creates a bottom. And then we're probably going to rally into the next FOMC meeting. And you got to remember, nothing goes straight up, nothing goes straight down. We've dropped you know, 15, 16%, whatever it was. Uh, Azure, I showed you in a video a day or two ago, it's dropped nearly 10%. NASDAQ's dropped nearly 16%, 15, 16%, and goes straight down. Now we're rallying back up to fill these gaps and back testing a trend line. So that's what's going on. We'll be watching to see if momentum remains negative here uh, with our oscillators. Told you back up at the top again. We're slamming up into these trend lines right here. Told you that we we're going to sell off, and we got a topping tail, and we closed below the upper Bollinger Band on the on the tenth. On the tenth, uh, we closed above it. We closed back below it on the eleventh. We get the CPI sell off. That was uh, January eleventh that we had the sell off. We peaked on the tenth, but I told you right here, hitting these trend lines, we overthrew them slightly. Now we're coming up and we're back testing this trend trend line. This trend line right here. I told you you got a shot at a bottom. If you can bounce off the 20 week and get a, get uh, signals turning back to bullish without getting a decisive break, we had a, a decisive break. Now we've come back towards this trend line, going back to the October 2022 low. So if we get a successful back test here, we turn back down. This is a trend line I'll be watching and horizontal support. Now, again, this trend line may change a little bit. Trend lines often change. Sometimes you overthrow them like we overthrew the trend line here, but we're going to be watching you still come back into the support area. I told you back up here again, you have the trend line here. You have the trend line horizontal support there. You've got the trend line here. And if this level breaks, then you have the trend line down here, this large channel. And we've got this smaller channel within it that has now broken down and is in back testing. So we're going to be watching to see what happens with that back test. NASDAQ weekly chart. Linear scaling has more of a rising wedge than the channel. And again, Back over here, I told you we we're going up to these trend lines, either going to overthrow them or turn down off them. We overthrew it and we we hit the trend lines I just showed you on the linear scaling. This is the log. And again, we've broken down here and we're back testing the 20 period. We're back testing the trend line here. So again, we'll be watching to see what happens with the back test here on the NASDAQ with our log and linear scalings. This is the log scaling with NASDAQ. Again, we've come up to just under that. Uh, log scaling trend line. If we if we take it from these lows, we're right at it. If we take it the red trend line from these lows, it's just directly overhead. So again, we're in back test mode here on the trend line going back here uh, to October of 2023. So we broke that trend line. I told you I had a shot at a bottom. If we can rally and and uh, off of that trend line and see signals turn bullish, we had a decisive break. And I told you if that happens. Forget it. You're likely going down to 17,000 and the 200. We hit the 200 and we hit 17,000 as far as the low here, 17,400 or so, uh, the, uh, the uh, low 400 area. Again, I think you're going to go closer towards this area right here. Uh, but again, we are in back test mode as we're hitting the 20 period moving average. This is log scaling. Again, I told you, I think we're going to end up forming a diversion. So I think we'll go back and test the 200. Then I think you'll form a bottom problem here oscillators are still negative now again the rsi just moved up to the 50 level it could turn at that 50 area okay as it found support at the 50 area in the uptrend 
it gets rejection at the 50 area in the downtrend like we did over here. So again, we'll be watching to see if a diversion develops. What's your back test mode? Here's the log scaling. We're just below the trend line. NASDAQ daily chart. Here's a linear scaling. We're coming up and it looks like we're just slightly coming up above that area. Again, connecting uh, this, these lows here and these lows right here. Looks like we're just moving slightly above it. Again, pushing above that 20 period moving average. And again, this trend line, we're just moving slightly above it right here. These are the trend lines I told you to be watching. Uh, we're just slightly moving above them, slightly moving above the 20. If you can clear these levels, we still have gap resistance in the 50. If you try to rally further with the CPI, if you get rejection right here, then we have today's gap. We have, again, the 200 period to be watching if we get a successful back test. So linear scaling and the log scaling, but we're in back test mode with both of them. It uh, looks like the linear, we're overthrowing it a little bit. The log scaling, we're just under it a little bit. So that's where we're at with the NASDAQ. The S&P is still under it a little bit as well. S&P with our linear scaling. Again, we're still under it. Again, uh, we're just below the 50 period. We come up to the 20 as it crossed below the 50 period. Again, you could be in back test mode here. You have support down here uh, at the 49.53 area. You've got your, your 200 at the 5,000 area. And again, you will be watching the RSI. It's rallied up. It's moved to just above 50. I'll be watching to see if it turns back down. Do we get a diversions? Do we get confirmation of a higher low? Over here, we got a diversions. And uh, over here, we had a diversions. And so you get these diversions. Sometimes you get higher lows. Uh, over here, we got a higher low right here. So we'll be watching to see which way it plays out. But you are in back test mode. You're rallying into the declining moving averages as we move to fill the gaps. Momentum signals are turning bullish already have as i've talked about a few that already have so leaders are mostly in the negative region not validating this move and you have like the rsi moving up here to 50 which is again where we turned down the last time when we rally we had a big rally we turned up just above 50 and then you had this big big drop where we just moved into a free fall for two days straight so you had a, a big big sharp decline uh and you dropped you know 400 points in in a couple of days Again, the RSI, we could turn off the 50 level here. NASDAQ is just right at it. S&P is just over it. Log scaling, we broke that trend line early on. I had tried to get back above it. And again, we're, uh, we're not rallying towards it, but we are, or we're not, not near it, but we are near the one with the linear scaling on the S&P 500 daily chart. So we'll be watching and surrounding the 50 and the 200, or I'm sorry, the uh, uh, 20 period. And we'll be watching to see if we test our 200 period moving average. We are rallying up into the 20 period, forming a bear flag on the S&P 500. S&P uh, has that gap fill at uh, 54.47 directly overhead. And you've got this potential, this potential bear flag that's forming here uh, on the S&P as we're becoming very, very overbought on both the NASDAQ and the S&P in the 60 minute time frame. So again, you're probably going to see this roll over. We're just right under right under the upper boundary there. And again, uh, still could go a little higher and uh, fill this gap. We're not, we're not uh, filling it yet. We're just quite right under it. You've got your 200 period directly overhead. So we'll be watching to see if we start rolling over, we start turning back down. Again, oftentimes you'll get one day up and one day down with the inflation data. See what happens. We're very, very overbought. And like the NASDAQ, uh, again, this being overbought here gave us a little bit of a pullback right here. Uh, overbought right here gave us a dramatic a drop over here and right here gave us a small pullback and over here gave us a, a bigger one and again in this downtrend so again you're forming a bear flag as you're moving into filling these gaps i told you over here to be watching these gaps watch the moving averages in the daily time frame but we are overbought again so we'll be watching to see what happens with the cpi data tensions in the middle east watching the market and those issues for the two driving forces right now, the CPI and tensions in the Middle East. Here is the RSI in the 60 minute time frame. Again, we're forming a bear flag directly overhead. We have this trend line excluding the shadow. Uh, so again, be watching. We got a gap and go today. We'll be watching to see what happens by tomorrow's close. And we'll be watching the gap fill at 40, uh, 5447. Uh, the trend line 200 period above that. We'll be looking at uh, these levels. Uh, and again, our MACD positive territory but on these 60 minute charts the 50 is still below the 200 period so again you're going to come back and you're either going to take out this low or get a higher low but you're forming a bear flag as we're going into these gap fills going into the 20 period that we just overthrew and 
50s are still below the 200. So again, there's going to be more work. Either you're going to come back and take the slow out and test the 200, or you're going to test the slow and get a higher low, one or the other. And I have a test of the 50 period moving average. We got above it, fill this other gap. Now we're going to be watching what happens. And again, if you come down and break this level, then we'll be watching to see what happens at the slow. Again, it's probably going to be tensions in the Middle East that ends up rattling the market, but we could still go higher. CPI, again, either today or tomorrow or by Thursday, we're being told Iran is expected to attack Israel, so markets could be rattled on that, but I th then I think you're going to see a bottom. So you're going to move to a new low. I could be wrong on that. We could get a higher low. You're going to test. I have the guts to tell you what I think. And again, I think you're going to test that 200 period, and then I think you're going to bottom. But you're forming a bear flag into the 20 period, into the gap fill, into this trend line. And again, NASDAQ's back testing the trend line, you're watching the uh, bear flag here. If it completes, uh, or if we just start turning down, we got a little bit of wiggle room, a little bit higher to have a perfectly parallel line with these lows over here. We're just under the area where I told you to be watching for a possible bear flag on the S&P 500. And again, near this gap fill area, 54, 57. Uh, again, just directly underneath it, we're becoming very overbought here in the 15 minute time frame. Zoom out, you look at your uh, your uh, 15 or 30 minute chart. Again, I uh, told you to be watching that uh, 54, 25, 54, 10, because this low is 54, 10. If we didn't fill the gap, uh, 54.25. Today was 54.36, so we moved above that level. So we'll be watching this gap fill right here. And again, uh, just eyeballing it, that's intersecting with our potential bear flag as we rally into 50 period moving average in the daily time frame just above the 20. Again, we got a gap, uh, you know, a uh, gap and go today. Uh, over here, we had a gap and trap, so we'll be watching to see if we do gap higher with the uh, with the uh, CPI, does it end up selling off like it did last time? It becomes of this bear flag, and again, we're back testing the trend line beautifully uh, on a NASDAQ, so we'll be watching, watching uh, those levels. But you have this bear flag here, you have the rising wedge on the NASDAQ 60-minute chart. Sorry, I'm posting a little bit late. Our birthday in the family, making arrangements for that, things I had to tend to. Uh, for the birthday celebration, so I'm sorry I'm posting a little bit late. Sorry about that. Please support the channel with the link directly below. That allows me to be able to provide you this information. If you like the chart, if you like the indicators, let me know that by supporting the channel today. The link will take you to a secured site. You can donate any amount you want. If you do that, I thank you. NASDAQ 60-minute chart. Now, as we came back to fill the gaps right here, we filled this one first, pull back. And then we came back up. S&P did not fill the gap at that time. It very well could. And again, we've been watching these two gaps because they're gaps that we had sharply lower. And near them, again, is the 10 and 20 period moving average that was uh, declining into them. And now we formed this rising wedge on the NASDAQ. Now, we'll be watching to see what happens with the inflation data tomorrow with the CPI. It'll go higher. S&P is forming a bear flag. It hasn't quite reached the upper boundary yet. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it does. We get, you know, you always want to watch a gap. Now, today's gap was a gap and go. We gapped higher, kept going. That's a gap and go. Um, we've had over here a gap and trap. You gap down on the intraday and you turned down and sold off the rest of the day. Here you gapped higher and you rallied pretty much most of the day. Watching to see if we close strong or weak. We ended up closing strong. But you always want to watch a gap. Is it a gap and go? Is it a gap and fill? Like here we gap down and we came back and we filled this level. Or is it a gap and trap? And every single gap that happens, we should be watching. Is it a gap and go, gap and fill, or gap and trap? So you have a rising wedge. You have a gap and go. Even if we go higher, I'll be watching to see, do we get reversal? Because we're very overbought now. And again, this, this level was associated with this peak. This level was associated with this peak. This level, our lower high, was associated with the lower high that we rallied back to the 78.6 Fibonacci, and then the diversions right here was associated with the top. So every time we come up to the extremes here, uh, we've seen, and even this level, we hit an extreme, and that marked that peak right there. So every time we've come up to the extreme, we've seen turn down, and I left out one right here. This one right here turned down, only a pullback. Here you got a pullback, here you got a bigger pullback, here you got a bigger sell-off that moved to new lows, here a bigger sell-off that moved to new lows. 
Here, a new lower high, lower low, moving to new lows, and here you got a reversal. So here we are, going into the CPI, we're up at extreme. So I think there's a good chance that we either sell off with the CPI or go a little bit higher and then sell off with the CPI and you get something like what you had over here where you gapped higher and then you turn or start to sell off immediately. We'll be watching what happens with the CPI, but again, possible rising wedge and sometimes with rising wedges, it may not be done yet or sometimes you get overthrow uh, moves with the rising wedge. Uh, that's very common, but I'll be watching to see if by tomorrow's close we end up turning up here uh, at extremes. You can remain at extremes for an extended period of time. Start seeing prices turn down. We'll see a rollover here at extremes and uh, one of these moves could could follow. So we'll be watching that. But you are forming a rising wedge as you're pushing into the 20 period moving average in the daily time frame and pushing into the back test of the trend line uh, that we broke down from some important levels of resistance. Now We've rallied into the declining moving averages and the gap fills. These are the levels I told you to be watching with the rally back up. I told you, watch the gap fills, watch the Fibonacci retracements, and watch the moving averages. We rallied up in here to fill this gap right here. We filled it, and we stalled at the 10-period moving average. Got a candle of indecision in the spinning top. I told you that could be a reversal off the 10, or it could be a continuation to the 20. And again... The Fibonacci retracements. I showed you this chart over the weekend with the Fibonacci's on it and again talked about these levels. The 54, uh, the 54, 53 areas are 61.8 Fibonacci of the entire decline. Again, I believe that the S&P is going to test the 200 period moving average, eventually form some type of bottom and then up to fill the gap on this high right here as we move towards the September 18th a Fed meeting and again you could go on just a little bit past that a week or two or three past that or uh, you may top with that but I think that if we see the NASDAQ close below the 200 period I think that will likely mark a bottom the 20 period cross below the 50 period we already had the 10 below it and we've now rallied back up towards this gap fill right here uh, and again this uh, gap right here uh, we're just uh, directly directly under it. Let me just thin it out there so you can see it. Uh, so far we've seen a 10, nearly 10% 10 drop, 9.78%. Uh, we've had nearly a 61.82 Fibonacci retracement. So again, we'll be watching. Do we get rejection uh, off of the 10 as it crosses below the 50 here? What happens with the CPI? We've got a wide range bar. I was watching to see if we would get a sell off with the rally or if we close strong or will we close weak? We close strong. We're watching what becomes of this bar right here Again, we have key support down over here at the 200 period horizontal support some p daily chart moving just under the 61.82 fibonacci retracement overthrowing the 20 period moving average is currently declining 10 below the 20 and the 50 and now the 50 below or the 20 below the 50 rally today allowed the semiconductor etf to go back up and fill the gap right here uh, nasdaq has come up and filled our gaps and rallying into a declining 20 period moving average with the semiconductors. I think NASDAQ did bouncing off the 200 and closing below it. We'll be watching that level. Here we have the NASDAQ up about two and a quarter percent and again rallying up into. Again, we got the candle of indecision. I talked about this yesterday. That could be the reversal or continuation. If it's a continuation, watch the 20 period, watch the, uh, uh, the 50 percent retracement here of the decline bounced off the 200 just like the semiconductors we're probably going to see a close below the 200 period moving average going into the jackson hole next week powell will be speaking a week from this friday if that's if they do it as they usually do and he speaks on the friday speak thursday or friday next week uh with the jack jackson hole the feds jackson hole so if we sell off i'll be watching the 200 period moving average horizontal support here again the 17,000 area just above the um 78.6 or i'm sorry the 50 percent retracement as i mentioned with the nasdaq daily chart again we're likely going to see another leg down for a bottoming process and then i think you're going to get a bigger rally again believes it's over it's over it's over and they back over here they told us this wouldn't happen and again i told you right there that the that nasdaq was topping 
Uh, on the 11th, we got the CPI sell off 500 points. I told you we we're going to rally back up and get a lower high at the 78.6 Fibonacci, and then we we're going to see a massive dump. I told you you had a shot at a bottom if we could bounce off the trend line in the weekly time frame, but I told you it's good that we break it and we just keep going down to the 200, but we broke it and we had this big drop. Now we've come back and we're just retracing those gap fills. I told you if we didn't, if we couldn't bounce in that level, I told you we're going down into this level here and then I think we'll bottom. Heard told us this wasn't going to happen. Experts, every, everybody on social media said, no, nope, ain't gonna happen. No, nothing's taking the market down. AI, AI, AI. When we started to fall, then they all said, oh, we're all gonna die. We moved back up and then after being off the lows then they told us, no, no, the bottom's in. And, you know, slapping themselves on the back and everything else. And again, this is likely not over. People getting very emotional. And again, they tend to get very bearish after a big drop happens, like what we had right here and right here. And then after a big move back up, going back to fill those gaps and to test the moving averages, then they tend to go in the other way. And again, they're very fickle. They're very emotional, the folks on social media. And right now, again, there's, again, about nothing's taking this market down and, and forth. And these are the same people that told us this wasn't going to happen. So again, I believe we're at a bottoming process. I believe we're eventually going back up here. Uh, I don't think that the NASDAQ will eventually be able to move to new highs. I think S&P will. I don't think NASDAQ will, but I do think a bottoming process will take place. But we're coming back up and filling the gaps. We filled this one on NASDAQ. Now we're filling this one on NASDAQ. And again, we're testing the, the 20, we're overthrowing it, and we're hitting our 50% retracement and just slightly overthrowing that. Overthrowing some trend lines, and I want to show you this on NASDAQ. I talked about it in yesterday's video.